Kellyanne Stitz was at the first day of camp and Kellyanne, what was one thing that stuck out to you from today? Tim, the pace of practice, it was high energy, up tempo. There wasn't a lot of walking, if any, between drills and breakouts. And when the team went into their 11 on 11 portion of the practice, as soon as the ball was snapped and the play was over, they were quickly resetting for the next first year head coach Josh Heupel and the staff debuting what game days at Neyland could look like in the fall. Bianca Crawford, or better known as Bianca Belair, continues to make a name for herself in the world wrestling entertainment industry. Saturdays here in the fall at Neyland Stadium. It's easy to think about General Robert Neyland and his legacy with ball football. But how many fans know the namesake behind Tennessee's baseball stadium? Reese, Josh Heupel said he's seen quarterback Joe Milton connect on downfield passes in competitive situations during camp, but that it hasn't translated yet during games. The LSU Tigers have found its successor to Paul Maneri, and it's not Tony Vitello. According to the report, the Tigers plan to hire Arizona's Jay Johnson. As for Vitello, he's right where he should be. Yes, they do, Tim, and it's a transfer many speculated through camp to be QB1, but it was made official this morning. As Josh Heupel named Joe Milton as the Vols starting quarterback. Tim, there's one number that sums up just how good these two programs are. 36. That's the number of state titles shared between Alcoa and Maribel. And I talked to VFL Fouad Reves on the Monday that Jeremy Pruitt was fired and Philip Fulmer decided to step down from athletic director. And the highlight of our conversation was Tennessee needing to hire with haste. Well, nine days later, they did just that. It's been quite the ride for Oak Ridge product and NFL wide receiver Tamorius Higgins or better known as T who got to live out his childhood dream this past year playing for the team he grew up rooting for on Sundays alongside his favorite player. If the ball was being thrown downfield to an open receiver on a Sunday at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, chances are it ended up in the hands of wide receiver T. Higgins. Higgins breaking free in Cincinnati, back in front. His road to the NFL began when he was five years old, all because he wanted to get his hands on some Hot Wheels. When he was five and my sister put him into football, he didn't want to play his first year. He quit five times and she bribed him with the Hot Wheels card. A bribe that paid off. As he continued to play, the rewards changed from toy cars to trophies and titles. What people are seeing, I've already seen. I've seen him do it in high school. He's just on a bigger stage now. From two-time Mr. Football in high school to winning a national championship in college, Higgins has picked up several honors and records along the way. But it wasn't just the Hot Wheels that influenced his game. It was also his idol. A.J. Green for the Cincinnati touchdown. But, you know, I modeled my game after him. You know, he's a big guy just like me. I think it was in 2016, he tweeted that one day he'll get to meet A.J. Green. On April 24th of 2020, that dream came true. With the 33rd pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select T. Higgins, wide receiver, Clemson. It's, it's really crazy just seeing all everything that how everything happens now and you know it's just you know it's a dream come true celebrating his biggest catch of the year where we got him when we got him in the second round is um, unbelievable now that you look back on it you know he kept the ball 67 catches for 908 yards and six touchdowns in his rookie year me coming in i really didn't you know have any goals of breaking records or anything like that. I was just wanted to come in and, you know, produce for my team. And he did, tying a franchise record for most receptions made by a rookie. It's just really been fun to watch him, the confidence that he has as he gets through the season. He's made plays against everybody in this league. He's got an extremely bright future. Just like those Hot Wheels, he's on track for a productive NFL career. And for a mom who watched him right here in East Tennessee. Oh, I tear up too every Sunday when I watch him. And a kid who started out here. I mean, if, if it's your dream to, you know, play in the NFL, you know, keep pursuing your dream. Don't give up. You know, things are going to be hard. It's going to be bumpy roads along the way. But, you know, you just got to keep going. It's not about the reward. Touchdown, T. Higgins. It's all just rewarding. 
As if his rookie season wasn't impressive enough, Higgins says he wants to get even stronger and faster in the offseason, putting in work to make a difference in his game that people will take notice of next season. Big day at the ballpark. Fans checkered Lindsey Nelson Stadium for the first time ever, or at least tempted to, helping give the ball some juice as game two of the massive Tennessee Arkansas series was underway today with the series on the line for the balls. Now Tennessee gets on the board first again in this one heading into the fourth with a two to nothing lead and that's where we pick it up. An error from the Hogs helps sets this one up. Connor Pavoloni line drive up the middle. Luke Listius turns on the Jets and comes in to score. Balls add to their lead three to nothing. Top of the six, Braden Webb torches one over left field. It hits the umbrella there and it's gone. A two run blast for the Razorbacks and a new ball game after the six tied at three all. Bottom of the eighth. Hogs lead by two. Jordan Beck says see you later. Solo blast puts the balls within four, but Arkansas adds one in the top of the ninth. So to the bottom we go, and it's truly the only highlight you'll need to see on the day. Balls down by two, no outs, two on base. Max Ferguson swings it. It's up, it's over, it's deep, and it's gone. The balls walk it off a three-run homer for Ferguson. Build this man a statue. Balls take game two, eight to seven. Ferguson had said that Coach Frank Anderson left it up to him, and he called it. Got it pretty good. Um, so it went over the fence by however many feet, and uh, I think everyone reacted uh, as if they were, you know, six years old. First pitch, I mean, you can't really draw it up any better, but I acted like a kid. I mean, I, I think I gave Anderson a little right, right hook and a left hook right there in the kidney, and then he gave me one back, and then I sprinted to I, – I don't really know what happened, to be honest with you, but that was insane. So – it's always cool to, to hit, do stuff like that and just kind of see the reaction. It just kind of shows you how close this team is and kind of what we've brought to, to Knoxville this year with how electric that environment was today and yesterday. What a win for the Vols, but they have another big game tomorrow, and Arkansas has yet to lose an SEC series this season. So the rubber game begins tomorrow at 1 p.m. Meanwhile, Lady Vol basketball legend and WNBA great Tamika Catchings is heading into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame today. She's a part of the nine-member 2020 class set to finally be inducted following a delay due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The ceremony is currently happening right now. Catching follows in the footsteps of her late head coach Pat Summit. To the Lynx, the third round of the Visit Knoxville Open teed off today. Stefan Yeager continues to separate himself at the top at 19 under through three rounds. Grayson Sig three strokes out of the lead at 16 under. Meanwhile, VFL Rick Lamb currently sits at nine under par after shooting a 67 today. And the Tennessee Smokies taking on the Trash Pandas in game five of their road series tonight. Looking to turn it around after dropping the last three. I'm joined by Ice Bears forward Jacob Benson. And Jacob, this is your second season with the Knoxville Ice Bears, but you had a very short stint in Europe at the beginning of season. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a different experience going over there. Uh, it definitely would have been a lot more fun uh, without COVID. But uh, like I said, it was cool getting over there. Uh, the language barrier is a little tough. But uh, other than that, I, I enjoyed my experience while I was there. And like Colton Heffley, you're also a little bit of a fighter as well. Um, what's with that spark on the ice? Uh, you know, it, it's kind of heat of the moment. Uh, I wouldn't put myself in the weight class as him, but uh, if, if the time comes where I need to, I will. But uh, yeah, I got to take some tips from Colton so I don't lose my teeth. All right, Jake, now it's time to get in the box. Favorite professional hockey team? Minnesota Wild. Do you have a nickname, and if so, what is it? Uh, I've been getting called the Moose lately. I don't know why, but kind of like it. Favorite Britney Spears song? Uh, toxic. I don't really know Britney no, Spears. No, that's a really good one. Oh. That, that, that was one. OK, good. <laughs> Best friend on the team? Uh, roommate, Ken Housen. Celebrity crush in high school? Jessica Alba or Amber Heard? OK, had a couple. That's yeah. Nice. Biggest lie you've ever told somebody? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I lied to my grandma about a hole in one, but I don't know if I wanted. I got the newspaper. I don't I think we should use that because I think I'd break her heart if I said that. She got me a trophy and everything else. Yeah, was... Best person on the team to follow on social media and why? Uh, whew. Probably myself. I'm a good follow. Follow me. 
Jake, you went to St. Cloud, but you wrapped the orange and white. Between the two colleges, which one's your favorite? You know, I, my heart's definitely in St. Cloud a little bit, but I'm becoming a huge Vols fan. I, I love it here down in SEC country, so go Vols. You said you have some gear. Uh, what's your favorite Tennessee gear you like to rev? Uh, I got a couple 1998 championship hats that are pretty sweet, and I'm going to be wearing them for the March Madness. Jake, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Go Vols. Feels like 98. Now, I've never done this before. Do you recommend the two-hand for beginners? I do. Okay. Maybe I can become a pro after this. Let's see. Okay, here we go.